Okay, welcome to part two of lecture 10. In, uh, in part one, we talked about uh, what um, human beings do to animals, and I brought up some, uh, some ethical concerns. Uh, for example, human beings bring into existence billions and billions of animals that otherwise they would not exist, uh, and, um, and the very number of animals cause a um, cause great environmental degradation because we well first of all uh, these animals require antibiotics pesticides um, and uh, and they uh, they pollute the waters they pollute the soil and um, and also as you know as well I'm, I'm going to talk about this in, uh, in this part in part two uh, Animals contribute to uh, uh, the climate change and many other issues that I'm going to talk about. So in, the, in part one, we, um, we also talked about whether uh, meat and animal products are essential to uh, good health. And uh, we learned that according to uh, uh, virtually all scientific uh, research, First of all, it, we know that, scientifically speaking, it is not necessary to eat any animal products in order to survive. Um, uh, not to mention that we don't need uh, animal products to, uh, to be well. And on the contrary, as we have learned from uh, many scientific uh, studies, Diets devoid, completely devoid of animal products are not only uh, beneficial, uh, but can also prevent diseases such as cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, uh, and, and more. Now, let's talk about sustainability. The idea of sustainability is the idea of using our natural resources in the most intelligent way. So uh, why waste natural resources? Now, when you think about the, um, the impact of diets on the, on the environment, you should think about the fact that meat eaters, um, meat-based, animal-based diets, require 17 times more land, 14 times more water, and 10 times more energy than vegetarian diets. As you can see, uh, if, you, uh, if we were to uh, adopt completely vegan diets devoid of animal products, um, we will be using uh, a minimal, very minimal um, amount of land and water and uh, and other natural resources. So in other words, we would uh, really uh, um, use the natural resources optimally. Also consider that 70% of US grains is fed to farm animals. What does it mean? It means that, as a scholar points out, feeding grain to animals is highly inefficient. Now, the fact that we have billions of animals implies that we have to feed them. Obviously, if, we, if they didn't exist, we would not have to feed them. And uh, the unfortunate truth is that in order to feed farm animals, the agriculture all over the world is focused on feeding these animals. Now, it's either we, we eat the grains or we feed the grains to, uh, to the animals. Think about that. 70% of only in the U.S. of U.S. grains is fed to animals. Um, that's enough to feed 800 million people. And so this is one of the, uh, uh, the biggest problems uh, at the moment. The fact that we are not using efficiently our food 
resources. Because now the arable land that can be used to grow food, uh, to feed uh, uh, people, human beings, is in fact used to feed the animals. Imagine how much food we would have in the world if we uh, eliminated the animals from the picture. Well, first of all, we would, would release an enormous um, um, amount of land that could be used to grow food and even organic food to feed human beings. So essentially, what I'm saying, in short, is that we don't, right now in the world, human beings, humanity is facing uh, a big, big, big problem. We don't have enough food to feed all human beings. And at the same time, uh, we, are, we choose the inefficient, very inefficient uh, decision to uh, use animals for food and therefore to feed these animals. Where when we could be eating uh, that food, I'm not talking about hay and grass. I'm talking about lentils, rice, millet, barley, uh, chickpeas, beans, all the, all these foods, nutri many nutritious food that is fed to animals and could feed uh, starving people. So we would have enough food for, uh, for many generations, for, uh, for uh, two worlds, two uh, Earths, but now we feed it to uh, the animals. Now, what's the problem there? Well, the problem is that, look at, look at up there in 1990. 1990, the world population was 5.3 billion people. It's a lot, but already by, by 2030, okay, in 10 years, in 10 years, the population is going to go up to uh, 8.6 billion. In 2100, we will have the, uh, the monstrous, frightening number of 11.2 billion people. Now, the question is, if we don't have enough food right now because we are feeding it to the animals, what are we going to eat in 2100? If I were the one asking this question, you could dismiss me by saying, ah, Professor Alvaro is asking that question, who cares? But this is the United Nations asking this question. And, and they ask this question to their scientists, and they ask the scientists to do the research. Once again, I wanna remind you that the United Nations is not a vegan organization. Consequently, th their scientists are not vegans. These are people who eat meat and you and consume animal products. And yet they uh, have come to the conclusion that our co um, current way of living, namely using animals for food, raising animals for food, is not sustainable. In other words, we cannot continue this way. We can't. We have to um, move past this barbaric tradition of eating animals and start eating our vegetables and be happy with that. If we want a future, currently, what, are, uh, what is the, um, the response of the, um, uh, the, uh, the animal um, industry? Well, one of the, uh, the responses, one of the, 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 the stratagems used is deforestation. Deforestation is happening as we speak right now because we don't know what they don't know. The farmers don't know. The livestock industry does not know where to place the animals anymore. There's no room for them. 
they need a room for pasture. And, uh, and so one option, obviously, as you know, I, I, don't, I don't have to defend the, uh, the notion, the idea that deforestation is horrible. It is immoral. Uh, and yet, this is what's happening in the world. And, I, and again, I don't have to, uh, I don't think I have to explain to you why it is bad, deforestation is bad, why we need trees. Speaking of water, once again, people always seem to, uh, to put the question in terms of uh, what is my preference, what is your preference, you do what you do, I do what I do. But it's not that, because we're talking about water usage. So your, your diet is not a matter of preference. It's not like I'm, I'm scratching my head now and I'm free to do that. And there, there are no moral consequences uh, of my scratching my head. But your diet does have moral implications. So uh, a meat-based diet consumes more than a half of gallons and liters of water that a vegetarian or a, a vegan diet uh, does consume. We're talking about water. Water is a natural resource. Water doesn't grow on trees, and we are polluting it. And, and because of the, uh, the meat industry, we are wasting water. And we are polluting it too. We are polluting it. Uh, this is something that we cannot avoid. The only way to avoid it, of course, is to uh, discontinue um, raising animals for food. Uh, unfortunately, the waste from uh, the livestock industry is carried uh, into uh, bays, gulfs, rivers, and um, and it's polluting the water. It's killing uh, the uh, it's killing fish. It's killing anything that comes um, around it, and it's being absorbed into the soil and uh, it's going back into your bodies. Another serious, serious problem that we have to mention uh, is global warming. Now everybody knows nowadays, unless you, uh, you've been living uh, under a rock or on the moon, everybody knows that livestock animals, uh, because they uh, emit global warming gases, like methane, uh, they, uh, they are contributing, they, they are uh, a leading cause, let's put it this way, they are a leading cause uh, of global warming, and uh, once again, the only solution is to uh, discontinue. If we, we are trying to revert, if it's even possible at this point, to, uh, to save the world from global warming, the only possibility, according to scientists, is that we do away with animal agriculture. And uh, probably last but not least, have you ever wondered why there is influenza? you ever wonder why there are many diseases? Well, that's because animals carry diseases. These are known as zoonotic diseases. Zoon means animal in uh, ancient, in Greek. Um, so this is a very critical issue. Uh, infectious diseases are spread between animals and people. That's why we are sick. And um, HIV as well. And so um, it's not a very smart thing to, uh, to keep animals around because they, they spread it, they carry diseases, and they spread it around. Now, the next, uh, uh, the next section of this presentation, I want to talk about uh, people's excuses. 
people, some some of them are very lame excuses for uh, not um, going vegetarian or vegan. And I want to show that, in fact, these, these are lame excuses, and uh, it, it, it's just a um, fallacious rationalization. Let's look at some of the, uh, the most um, famous excuses or infamous excuses. One big excuse that I, that I heard is that being vegetarian is too expensive. Now, one thing is to... Uh, to assert something, and another thing is to prove it. Now, scientists uh, sought to prove this point, or rather, I should say, to disprove this point. So uh, many scientists, independently, by the way, uh, if you uh, see the slide, I linked one famous study about nutrition and price, but there are many others that are independent of this one. Many studies point in the same direction, namely that eating a vegetarian diet is actually cheaper than a meat-based diet. Now, I think that the confusion, the reason why people think that eating a, a vegetarian diet, or vegan diets for that matter, is more expensive is because what they have in mind is their own ideal of vegetarian diet. So, uh, for example, they um, they think that if you go vegetarian, you have to replace the meat with uh, fake meats. And as I said in uh, in a, in a in part one of this presentation, if you uh, I'm sure if you don't don't live under a rock, you are uh, you go to any store nowadays, and you uh, you notice that they they have several different uh, kinds of uh, uh, meat, uh, fake meats, fall fall meat, as they call it. Um, all kinds of sausages and uh, and whatnot, and um, and also they have nowadays you find uh, vegan cheese made. Um, uh, made out of uh, uh, nuts or um, other ingredients. Uh, there's also cheese, vegan cheese, that melts in, uh, with, with heat, so you can put it on pizza. There are vegan pizzerias, in fact, uh, around New York City that serve uh, vegan pizza with vegan cheese. So you, um, you name it. There are, there are a lot of ways of being vegan. There are a lot of ways of being vegetarian. Now, if you choose to, uh, to eat Processed foods that is expensive, that's a different story. You, you can't blame it on vegetarianism for being expensive. But as far as we are concerned, when you think about broccoli, spinach, potatoes, carrots, cabbage, rice, oatmeal, lentils, quinoa, oranges, cantaloupe, kiwis, and so on, uh, these uh, produce are not expensive. They don't have to be expensive. Uh, if you uh, if you uh, go to the, the uh, go shopping and and they overcharge you for broccoli or rice, you uh, you you're shopping in a, in the wrong in a wrong store. Rice, in fact, is the cheapest food uh, that that can possibly be bought with your money, uh, and um, it's nutritious. It, it, it is high in calories. In fact, the Chinese know this, and, uh, and well, I mean, just just think about the fact that poor people um, eat rice, beans, potatoes, corn. Um, they 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 can't afford uh, meats of any kind on any of the products. Just study history. History is reveals. That, that, that the royalty, the kings, these uh, wealthy uh, lords always had meat. On the other hand, the peasants um, always ate poor food, vegetables, bread, 
maybe some wine, potatoes, uh, rice, and other grains. So the idea that it, it is expensive is just purely a misconception. It is not. It is scientifically, demonstrably uh, false that being a vegetarian is more expensive. Another excuse is religion. But religion should not be an excuse because no religion in the world, no religion that I know, um, recommends that we eat meat. Uh, if you take the Bible, the Quran, they don't say, take animals, eat them, make burgers out of them, do whatever you want with them. In fact, there are many beautiful passages in the Bible, in the Quran, and other uh, books that, that praise animals, that um, tell human beings that animals are not just a property, they are intelligent, they are sensitive, they, they feel pain, and so on. And in the Bible, if you know the story, in the Bible of Christianity, essentially, uh, before the fall of man, before human beings uh, uh, sinned, and, um, and God got mad at them, um, Adam and Eve lived in, uh, in the Garden of Eden, and in the Garden of Eden, guess what? There was no meat, no carnivore animals. What does that mean? Now, you can say, well, I read in the Bible about fish, about this, about that. Okay, but, but also you have to consider this passage in the Bible, very important passage in, um, in Genesis. How do you account for that? How do you explain that God himself says that he created uh, fruit and grains and vegetables for all the creatures in the world? How do you deal with that? Uh, now, Naturally, if you're not a Christian, you uh, you don't have to deal with that. Um, but what about the Quran? The Quran also um, talks about animals as uh, beings that that form communities. They're not food; uh, they are individuals like us. Not to mention the fact that there are many religions. So, which one are we going to listen to? And um, and also. And most importantly, I have to say, although I, I am not very much religious as a person, I have to say that in my years of studying religion, and I've been interested in, uh, in religion for um, more than 30 years, I guess, I have never heard uh, any religion saying, murder others, destroy uh, cause pain and pollute the environment. All the religions that I know have a similar. This is what's what's beautiful about religion, that all religions that I know have a similar message, and that is love. Be compassionate. Be gentle. Be nice to others. Do good to others. If you know a religion that well, except for voodoo. If you know a religion that says otherwise, please let me know. But all religions that I know uh, preach love, compassion, and, um, and doing good to others. Now, when you think about the uh, animal uh, agriculture, the livestock industry, there's no one, not even one aspect that is compassionate, that is loving, that is caring, that demands and prescribes to do good. Everything in the, in the uh, animal agriculture business is about profit, is about pain, is about suffering, is about polluting the world, destroying the environment, and um, in a lot of suffering, suffering of innocent animals. Now, you, of course, you can disagree with this, but um, I don't see how you're going to disagree with this because there's nothing positive, there's nothing loving, there's nothing beautiful, there's nothing uh, uh, virtuous about 
the animal agriculture. Again, if you, are, if you can find one positive aspect, beautiful, one aspect that you can be proud of, to say, I'm a human being and I'm proud of the, um, the livestock industry because, well, let me know. Another big excuse is that humans have been eating uh, meat for millions of years. Well, this is not an, an entirely true statement because obviously before uh, agriculture was invented, before human beings um, domesticated animals, sure, you can, you can argue, well, the hunters ate some meat. Well, first of all, I don't know how much meat they ate. Um, I'm willing to bet that they didn't eat meat every day. They didn't have bacon and eggs for breakfast, uh, bolognese, tagliatelle for, uh, for lunch, and a steak for dinner. If they were lucky that they caught an animal, maybe they, they had that animal. And, uh, and then for, for, um, to survive, they, they had to uh, eat essentially uh, mushrooms uh, and, and uh, fruit, mangoes, papayas, whatever they, they could find. And, and tender leafy greens. But now, I have in mind, what I have in mind is, think about way back, prior to hunter uh, knowing how to hunt animals. So, uh, so the idea is, human beings did not materialize on this earth knowing the skills of hunting. They had to learn it. And before that happened, we're talking about millions of years of evolution. So uh, what did human beings eat before hunting? They obviously ate, well, again, fruit and, uh, and some greens, maybe some dead buds, but nothing like eating meat every day. And it, that, that is completely different from a... Uh, from, uh, going to supermarkets and buying tons and tons of meat. That is not what human beings used to do for millions of years. So if you want to use that argument, you, uh, you have to be consistent. Because for millions of years, human beings, uh, they went through a, a long period of time when they didn't eat any meat. They had to eat whatever they, they, they could find that didn't run away or, or would fight back. Then they uh, they evolved into uh, hunters, um, and then after agriculture and animal exploitation, you have after the industrial revolution, you have supermarkets, globalization, and more meat and animal products. Now, if you want to be consistent, then which era are you going to choose to say human beings have been doing this for a long time? It would be arbitrary. Why don't we? Uh, than hunt for meat since human beings were hunters. It's not a good idea, I don't think. And I don't think most people, most people, there are hunters, there are, there are people who are passionate about hunting, but most people would not do it. Uh, I would never dream of killing an animal unless, I don't know, I have to defend myself, but I wouldn't do it. Um, all right, let, let's go to the next point. Some people claim that we are on top of the food chain, but it seems to me that we are we eat meat not because we are on top of the food chain, but because we are on top of the, the supermarket chain. We go to supermarkets and we purchase meat. Can you imagine human beings in the wild? We are pretty weak compared to other animals. We are not on top of the food chain. Now, if being on top of the food chain, by, by being on top of the food chain, you mean that we are arrogant and we are crafty and we have weapons and so we can subjugate others, then that's, that's what it is. But don't tell me that we are on top of the food chain. But in any case, let's assume that we are on top of the food chain and this means that, that we are the, uh, the most powerful animals 
of all, I don't see how this leads to the conclusion that we have to eat meat. It's like saying, uh, in our classroom, there's a kid, he's the most powerful one. I mean, he, he really, it, he's unbeatable. Uh, any, he can kick anybody's butt, right? Because he's just so, so strong, way stronger than any other kid. And everybody is, in, in the entire school, is afraid of him, okay? So he can do whatever he wants. He can take your lunch, take your money, beat you up. Uh, he can do whatever he wants. Now, does it follow that because he's on top of the, uh, the school chain, does it follow that he must take your lunch and beat you up? It doesn't. Because if he is a sensible kid, he's going to want to think, I am the strongest, but I have to respect others. I can't just beat up people just because I'm the strongest. So this, this uh, argument, we are on top of the food chain, is just spurious. Our bodies have evolved to eat meat. Well, this is not true. It's not scientifically true, it's not documented, but in any case, our bodies have evolved to do a lot of things. Have evolved to, uh, to have uh, wisdom teeth, to have tails, to have hair, um, where you don't need them, uh, to go to war, to fight tonsils, many things that we don't need, they are bad, and it doesn't mean anything, the fact that we have evolved to do certain things. But in, in any case, we have not evolved. Um, we have not evolved to eat meat, and uh, this can be scientifically shown by the fact that our digestive system is not um, n nowhere near comparable to uh, to that of carnivore animals. Uh, we have a hard time digesting uh, uh, meat and animal products. Um, we um, we have flat teeth. We don't. We, uh, we don't need uh, uh, all the fat and the protein in, uh, in meat. We don't have the enzymes that carnivore animals uh, have to uh, digest meat. And, uh, and furthermore, we, uh, well, there, there are many things, but furthermore, um, human beings do not produce vitamin C. Your body produces a lot of uh, a lot of things, a lot of nutrients. Vitamin C is not one of them. Uh, and without vitamin C, you will die. You will be sick and die. Now, guess what? Those animals that eat meat by nature, carnivores, like lions, dogs, etc., their bodies produce vitamin C. Now, what's the, the best explanation of this fact? The best explanation is that human beings not being carnivores need to acquire vitamin C through uh, plants and fruit. And car on the other hand, carnivore animals not eating vegetables and fruit have the capacity to, uh, they have evolved the capacity to uh, manufacture vitamin C. This is a very telling, I think, uh, argument. Now, this is the, uh, the lamest of all uh, excuses, as I said earlier in, uh, in part one. Meat has proteins. I need the proteins to survive. Uh, anytime you, you think about that argument, just think about cows don't eat meat. Gorillas don't eat meat. Elephants don't eat meat. Uh, there are many animals that are strong, they are big, they are successful. They do not require meat. To survive. Um, this is not a mystery. If you are, especially if you're in college, you, you, are, you are, have taken biology, bio 101, you should know this. Unless you, are, you live under a rock, you should know that, uh, that there are 20 amino acids. Uh, there are, these are the building blocks of proteins, and, uh, and only nine amino acids are not uh, present in uh, in food, in vegetables, and uh, in, um, in fruit, 
Therefore, what are we going to do with these? Uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Uh, the, the point is, only nine, I mean, of these 20 amino acids are essential because the uh, the body does not make them. Okay, 11 amino acids uh, are made by the body. Okay, we don't have to worry about those. We have to worry about these nine amino acids. Okay. We have to worry about nine amino acids um, that I listed here because the body does not make these amino acids. Now, when you look at where you're going to find these amino acids, you will see that you can find them in uh, things like seaweed, pumpkin, peas, rice, sesame seeds, watercress, uh, greens, bananas, chickpeas, lettuce, leafy greens, in other words, the, the nine essential amino acids can be found in fruits and vegetables. Or, in other, other words, we do not need to eat any animal products because all the essential amino acids, all the proteins that we need, are found in uh, vegetables and fruits, legumes, nuts, seeds, and so on. This would be a good argument if and only if you could prove that there is a, a nutrient, a particular nutrient uh, necessary for good health that cannot be found anywhere but in, uh, in the meat or in some animal products. That would be a good argument, but unfortunately um, it's not an argument because all the essential nutrients, all the essential, essential amino acids, all the essential fatty acids, everything that is required for good health can be found in uh, vegetables and plants. The next uh, excuse is that uh, vegetarians have lower B12. This is uh, demonstrably false. Um, in fact, many, many meat eaters, people who, eat, who swear by meat, have lower B12. That's the reason why they pharmaceutical industry produces B12. And furthermore, you have to take into consideration that animals do need B12 as well. Um, where do uh, they get B12? Cows, essentially, you can say to me, I need to eat steak, beef steak, because, because of the B12. But the question is, where does the cow get the B12? Because B12 is not produced, it's not manufactured by the body. So uh, essentially, the cow is going to get B12 from grass, from eating, same place where you can get the B12. So B12 is not an issue. And if it is an issue, it doesn't seem to me that, that we have to uh, slaughter animals to get B12. We can go to the pharmacy and get a spray and spray it once a month and you're good with B12, if that's what your requirement is. Um, I think I've, I went over this excuse before, but I'm going to uh, reiterate the excuse. Animals eat other animals, so why shouldn't we? Um, it doesn't mean anything uh, because there are many animals that do not eat animals. In fact, if you eat uh, beef, if you eat a burger made uh, out of uh, uh, cow meat, don't tell me that you need a you, you're eating that because animals eat other animals, because the cow doesn't eat other animals. And why should we get our morality from animals that eat other animals? That doesn't seem uh, sensible to me. Um, we, unlike many animals, have rationality. We have reason. We have logic. We have an understanding of morality. We can take ethics courses and uh, we have moral responsibility. So uh, that is a big, big difference. And that's why we, uh, we shouldn't eat animals. We have a good reason for not eating animals. Animals can't reason like us. Well, a lot of people cannot reason like us. Think about how fortunate you are that you are so intelligent that you go to college, you uh, 
We're getting a bachelor's degree or master's degree here at St. John's College, St. John's University. Think about the fact that there are, there are people who are, and I'm not talking about people with uh, severe retardation or mental disability. Uh, there might be uh, intelligent people, smart people, but they are just not, not fit uh, for college. They, uh, they just can't uh, reason like you. And of course, they're, they're considered also people who uh, have lower, um, lower mental and cognitive capacities. They don't think like us, but we don't start using uh, these individuals and exploiting them for food and research just because they, uh, they have lower mental capacities. Now, the next one is vegan. Vegans can't, can't be strong. Um, I've heard this many times. What if you're a bodybuilder? What if you're an athlete? Then you need to eat meat. I don't, I don't understand why people think that as soon as you, uh, you do some uh, physical activities, you need meat, you require meat. There are many, many uh, vegan, for example, bodybuilders, like this guy is a professional bodybuilder, um, and uh, he is a vegan uh, since birth, essentially. His family raised him as a vegan, just like my children, by the way. They, they, uh, they never had animal products. Um, there, there are professional bodybuilders like, like um, this woman. She never ate meat in, a, in her entire life. She's a professional bodybuilder. Uh, there, there are also uh, people who became vegan. This guy here um, he became vegan in 1998, and uh, he has a website and uh, I think uh, I think he has a a, a um, YouTube uh, channel, if I'm not mistaken. But in any case, he promotes veganism, and he he uh, he says, "Look at look at me, people. If I can do it, you can do it." And I don't eat meat. Um, also, think about this guy here. Um, this is one of those guys who uh, participate in those competitions uh, for strongmen, and um, he he's he has an incredible strength, and uh, and he's a vegan. Um, but the problem is that a lot of people think that strength, being a strong athlete, a strong individual, you, uh, you have to be big, you have to have muscles. Well, that's, that's a possibility. But remember that there are also athletes who are incredibly strong and do not have all those muscles. They're not big muscles, but they have um, what they call, um, what are they called, uh, different, uh, different kind of muscle uh, that is more dense and, uh, and strong. So it doesn't get big and it's strong. Um, I'm thinking about marathon runners. Have you ever, have you ever run a marathon? Um, think about the, the, the kind of strength that you needed to run 26 miles. Okay. Um, and I'm talking about fast, like this guy here. Um, so uh, try, try running a marathon. See the, the, uh, the, the amount of strength that you, uh, you need to do that. And, and then tell me if it's possible. And uh, you, don't, you don't require meat or anything, uh, any animal products. Now, my favorite one is the one that says, the excuse that says, but human beings have canine teeth, right? As you can see, this little girl um, has canine teeth. And, uh, and just think about it, if it's sensible to, uh, to look at this little girl and, and say, yes, yeah, she is meant to eat meat. She must eat meat because she has canine teeth. What kind of argument is that? When you look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the teeth of human beings, doesn't look like 
we are meat eaters by any stretch of the imagination. These are not teeth that can be in any way useful to tear flesh and, uh, and eat meat. This one is a meat eater. And, uh, and this is what meat eaters do. Now, if you uh, do this, do me a favor. Uh, take a selfie of yourself jumping on, uh, on that kind of animal or on a zebra. Bite the zebra with your canine teeth and then send me the, uh, the photo and I'm going to use it here for my, my PowerPoint presentation. But until you, uh, you do that, you shouldn't claim that we have canine teeth and therefore we're meat eaters. Carnivore animals, look at their teeth, dogs, uh, wolves, etc. They have sharp teeth. All their teeth, as you can see, they're sharp. Omnivore animals, well, they have a combination. Mostly sharp teeth, some flat. Um, but look at down, herbivores and humans. Pretty much they are the same. We have all flat teeth. They're all flat. Because we, we, are, we are meant to eat greens. Now, the point is, what I never understood is why we should determine the diet of an animal on the basis of the way his teeth look like. Now this hippopotamus has, as you can see, those big fangs look like canine teeth, but they don't eat meat. This deer has also fangs. They don't suck blood, they don't eat meat, they eat leaves. This big guy has a lot of sharp teeth, doesn't eat meat. This guy here, don't eat meat. And this guy here, doesn't eat meat. Consequently, it seems to me that we can put to rest the canine teeth argument. Rest in peace. Now, and finally, um, but I, again, I talked about this excuse before, and I'm going to explain it again. Uh, some people think that what you eat is just your personal choice. Do not bother me, okay? I don't tell you what to eat. Don't tell me what to eat. Uh, don't judge me. Now, this is a, a, a very bad argument, and, and, uh, and it, 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 evinces, it evinces profound misunderstanding of morality. Now, when you consider that using animals for food uh, causes suffering to the animals. It causes negative impact on the environment. Pollution, global warming, okay? lack of food. It causes health problems. When you think about all these problems, how could you possibly say that Eating meat is your personal choice. It seems obvious, not only to me, but many, many scholars, that, it, that what we eat is not a personal preference, not a, just a matter of personal choice. Um, we have to be more responsible when it comes to uh, food. We have to eat in a way that does not cause any damage to the environment. And it tries to reduce the amount of suffering of pain in the world. So in conclusion, eating meat causes unnecessary animal cruelty. Not eating meat obviously doesn't, or at least it minimizes to a, uh, to a very small degree. Eating meat is unhelpful and dangerous for a our health and the health of others. 
not eating meats, eating a vegetarian diet, a total vegetarian diet is helpful and it's optimal. Eating meat and animal products is unsustainable as we have seen. Um, and, and also as we have seen, according to scientists, it is um, discontinuing animal agriculture and uh, embracing a vegetarian, total vegetarian diet is a solution, is the solution uh, to uh, sustainability. Also, uh, uh, eating uh, animal products, waste water, causes pollution, and most importantly, it is an inefficient energy consumption, in an inefficient way of eating, because it, it consumes uh, um, inefficiently our natural resources. So uh, also global warming, waste of land, destruction of forest, deforestation. All these problems are not caused by, by vegetarian and vegan diets. Now, the last, if you look at the, this horrible, um, horrible slide, unfortunately, any, any way you slice it, any way, no pun intended, but any way you look at it, in order for you to have animal products on your plate, unfortunately, you can't deny this, you can't hide it, but unfortunately, this needs to happen. But this does not need to happen. This is horrible. This is just horrible. Why introduce into the world lots of pain, lots of blood, lots of uh, cruelty when we can live um, without it? Now, that unfortunately is leading, uh, it's taking us, it's driving us to uh, the destruction of the environment, destruction of the world. It is that serious and not exa exaggerating. Um, and so, uh, since this is what's, where we're heading toward, um, at one point, we're going to have to make a decision. So, what, what do we do? Well, what I propose, at least in my published work, if you're interested, what I propose is that it is time to uh, legally ban animal products. Now, First of all, animal agriculture, hunting, scientific research, uh, books, papers, magazines have established powerful mechanisms to uh, subvert our moral understanding and our, and our capacity to reason well. What I mean is that children, for example, start eating meat not because of their choice, but because their parents feed them um, meats, feed them animal products. Now notice that these animal products do not like, do not look like animal products, because meat is always served in uh, in cute shapes and forms. Children, in fact, there are many psychological studies that show that, that children are very sensitive about animals, very compassionate, and they understand. If they see it, they understand that it is just wrong to, uh, to kill that chicken because when, uh, when they put two and two together and they see that a chicken is no different from a dog or a, a little kitten, they understand that and they, they don't accept killing animals for food. When I was a child, um, fortunately, I have to say, my parents did not interfere. I realized that eating uh, meat and animal products, as enjoyable as it might be, um, it is essentially an enjoyment done on, on, uh, on the expenses of innocent, innocent animals that feel pain and do not want to feel pain. So uh, the reason why we, uh, we eat meat, many people eat meat, is, is, is a habit. It's a habit. Caregivers and parents avoid the conversation. 
they avoid the truth. When we finally discover the truth, when we go to college or high school, it's too late. It's too late and we, uh, we create these mechanisms um, that rationalize and justify the, the, uh, the consumption of animal products. We, we create all these excuses. We are on top of the food chain. We are on top of this. Uh, we need the nutrients, uh, but vegans are crazy. We create all sorts of excuses. Okay. Now, you can also see this, this uh, subversion in the form of language because the meat industry knows that what they are doing is wrong. They know that we're, what it's doing is atrocious. It's terrible. It's dis despicable. It, is, it, it lacks uh, uh, nobility. It lacks virtue. And that's why they disguise what they're doing by using euphemisms. Euphemisms, which are nice ways of describing something terrible. For example, they use a, the term juicy to refer to meat. But meat is not juicy. Meat is bloody. Hunting is referred to uh, harvesting, and it's considered a sport. Butchers like to be called meat markets, slaughterhouses, meat plants, mountain oysters, which are animal testicles, um, drumsticks, basically they, they are the cut off legs of chickens. Veal, it's killed and cooked baby cow. Um, the, uh, the meat industry and, and meat terminology is pervaded by, uh, it's full of these euphemisms. Euphemism to hide the truth, to hide the blood, to hide the cruelty. Um, meat dishes are purposely turned into our food by cutting in a certain way, cooking in a certain way in order to, uh, uh, to um, uh, move away, move past of the, uh, the semblance of animals, dead animals, which is what they are. Um, in fact, um, I argue that most people would not eat raw meat, bloody meat on a daily basis. There's actually uh, this kid on, uh, on YouTube who uh, goes around the world eating uh, raw flesh. I don't know if he's still alive. Um, most people would not do that. Most sensible people cook their meat, season their meat, and they enjoy the experience, the company, the tradition, and so on. So, a legal ban on the production of animal products. How would it work? Well, the way it, it would work is, first of all, you increase the price of animal products progressively. At the same time, you, uh, you implement more education about nutrition, um, so, uh, and more uh, food availability. This is not a, a, a very hard concept and a very hard uh, stratagem to implement. It's very easy. It can be done, progressively increasing price. Uh, also, this has to be done alongside taxation. So the government should say, you uh, have a form of agriculture that has negative environmental impacts, then we are, we are going to tax you more and progressively more. You, you have, however, the, uh, the option of turning your, uh, your agriculture, your form of agriculture into an agriculture that does not have negative impacts, negative global impacts. And, uh, and if that is the case, the government should uh, promote sustainable forms of agriculture, okay? And even uh, give subsidies to these forms of agriculture. So, and penalize, penalize agriculture that essentially 
is destroying the world, is destroying us. If you think about it, it makes sense. Why should we give subsidies? Why should we promote uh, the dairy industry? As you know, uh, lobbyists go to Washington, D.C., and they, they push the government to, uh, to promote the, the, the sale of dairies. You see these uh, bills all over the place in subway cars, uh, milk, you got milk, uh, drink more milk. But essentially, that is the promotion of a food that is, is causing the destruction of the environment. That should be penalized. Education is very important because, as I said, children start learning very early and, and they form their habits, they form their, their beliefs. And, uh, and so it's, it would be much, much, uh, it is much more difficult to, uh, to make people reason when they're adults because eating meat is not only a simple habit, uh, it, it is connected with many things, with, with culture, with, uh, uh, with, with um, um, tradition, with families, and so on. So it's, it's hard when you're an adult and, um, and you, your family tradition is that you love your parents, but they live in, uh, in, in Florida and, uh, and you see them once a year. So it's hard for you. Uh, it's going to break your, your parents' heart to, to say, look, I'm a vegan. I don't eat meat and I don't accept any dead turkey on the table. Uh, and so you continue this. Um, so uh, education, the role of education is, is paramount. Vegan food should be uh, uh, explained, should be promoted. Nutrition should be uh, taught in schools. And especially morality should be taught in schools. We should teach our children that it's not important the, uh, the end the end does not justify the means. What's important is how we get to that end. Uh, what's important is living in the way, in a way similar to uh, what Aristotle, you, you learned from Aristotle, living a, a life of virtue, living a life of benevolence, being good, trying to be good to others, trying to reduce the amount of suffering in the world. Try to reduce the amount of blood in the world, violence, of aesthetic, uh, negative aesthetic values, of seeing blood in slaughterhouses and animals in cages. All that creates an ugliness in the world that it's better without. The world is better without. So, in conclusion, legal ban is possible because we don't consume meat because it is good or necessary. It is not necessary. Now, the fact that it is good is questionable because if you ask me, uh, and if you ask millions of vegans, uh, they, uh, they don't think that meat is good. And a lot of meat, by the way, a lot of vegans, think about this as an important point. A lot of vegans uh, became vegans. They, uh, they have been, I know people who have been meat eaters for many years and um, and so they have both experiences. They have the experience of eating meat, knowing what it tastes like, and having the experience of being a vegan. And, um, and having both experiences, there are millions of people who uh, would never go back to eating meat, even if meat were uh, produced uh, uh, synthetically, for example. And, and as a matter of fact, that's, that's one of the things that uh, the meat industry is trying to do to produce in vitro meat. I wrote an article about that, opposing to in vitro meat. You can find it on my on my website if you're interested. Uh, so you see what I have to say about that. I think it's wrong. Um, now, one important point to understand. Final point is that. Other people make decisions for us. In our society, we think that we are free. We do have a certain amount of freedom, but most of the things that we do, we do them because we are told to do them. The music that we listen to, the food that we eat, 
the clothes that we wear. It is the uh, those that own the means of production that decides what to produce and they decide what we are going to consume. It's not the other way around. We don't create our own choices. We are uh, the recipient of the choices of the big industries. So uh, if we are uneducated and constantly deceived by language, by the media industry, we cannot form the right opinion. With education about food, about nutrition, and ethics especially, and morality, the role of morality, a legal ban is possible. Now, this is not going to be done in a, in a matter of one generation, two generations. Of course, it's going to take a long time. No one is suggesting here, I am not suggesting that we become vegetarians like this. Tomorrow morning, we wake up, we're all vegetarians. That will probably create a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, economic uh, mess up. No one is suggesting that. What I'm suggesting here is that a legal ban has to be progressive and uh, we have to move, but we have to do it. We have to do something to move toward uh, the, uh, uh, toward the uh, phasing out and discontinuance of animal agriculture. And this essentially is what we are preaching, what I'm preaching here. Um, that I want to live in a world like this without blood, without violence, with compassion. In a, in a world where I can breathe clear air, in a world that is there available for my children and my grandchildren. So the only solution, it seems to me, is to... Uh, abandon, to move past this medieval, barbaric, obsolete, cruel tradition of using animals for food. Let's eat vegetables and be happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, thought-provoking lecture. So this is the end of part two. And um, I'll see you back for uh, lecture 11.